Not only was he scamming his audience, he was using the money that he stole to fuel his endeavors he's become so infamous for. Isn't that just amazing, sweetheart? Now you know the proper way to clean up blood. If I can't have you, no one can. Yandere Dev has apparently been caught interacting in a very charged manner. We all want to be loved. We want someone to cherish and care for us. A normal relationship usually plays out like this. You have a crush on someone, so you ask them out. But in certain cases, it can take an unexpected turn. And these innocent crushes can sometimes spiral into deadly obsessions. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have an amazing week ahead. Love turn lethal. Some people will do almost anything for the ones they love, and yandere's are the perfect examples of that. They'll go to the ends of the earth for their crush, no matter who gets hurt. Yandere Simulator is a video game that introduced a lot of people to what yandere's actually are, and scarily enough, they've turned the concept into something admirable. So what is a yandere? In short, it's someone who is madly obsessed with their crush. A yandere is a Japanese archetype that's given to an individual, often a female character, who's so deep deeply infatuated with their love interest that they do unspeakable things to maintain that relationship. When I say unspeakable, I mean things that will definitely land you in prison. A better word to describe the love that these people feel is obsession. They spend almost every waking moment thinking about their partner and will do anything in their power to get closer to them, be with them, or protect them. While this doesn't seem like the sort of relationship most people would want, there's one game that changed that perception, introducing a young Yandere Simulator, the game of dark obsessions. Yandere Simulator is a cult classic in the world of indie games. In early 2014, a post was made on the forum website 4chan talking about the possibility of a game based around a Yandere main character. There were a ton of positive reactions, and the poster saw this as a green light to start making the game. That's when Yandere Simulator was born. On April 4, 2014, the original prototype video for Yandere Simulator was released on YouTube. The video was was posted to the account Yandere Dev, and was the first of many Yandere Simulator videos on this channel. The concept of the game was simple. Eliminate all threats to your relationship with your crush. The main character, Ayano, is a Yandere who has developed an unhealthy obsession with a boy in her school that she calls Senpai. But she's not the only girl who's got her eyes on him. There are a ton of other girls who also have a crush on Senpai, and Ayano does not like that at all. The game is all about stealth and strategy. Playing as as I know, you need to keep tabs on your crush and the girls that talk to him, who are called rivals. You do that by looking through their bag, talking to other students, or stalking them around campus. Throughout the game, your goal is to eliminate any of the girls that would jeopardize your future relationship with Senpai. And we're not using the word eliminate lightly. Players can explore the school grounds to find props and items that they can use in their master plan of removing the competition. They can also go to class and join clubs to develop skills or gain access to items that can help them with their plans. But you have to be careful because if word gets out that you're the person behind all of the chaos at school, the police will find out. Or even worse, senpai will. Because to a yandere, their biggest nightmare is when your crush realizes your true dark side. Why do you have a weapon? What are you gonna do with that thing? Stay back! <gasps> No, wait, Senpai noticed me at the worst time. That's why in Yandere Simulator, you must be strategic and sneaky when you're getting rid of the other girls. Keeping all your actions secret and away from teachers, students, and most importantly, your Senpai is the number one goal in the game. It's been almost 10 years since Yandere Simulator first started development, yet the game is nowhere close to being done. The game is still in its demo stages, with most of the major updates being teased on the Yandere Dev YouTube channel. But even though it's taken this long, there are still countless fans out there eagerly waiting for an official release date. But how hasn't the hype died down after so many years? Well, that's all due to the developer of the game. With his consistent uploads to the Yandere Dev channel and his interactive Discord and Reddit forums, he's been able to keep the community buzzing about the game. But there are many that believe his involvement with Yandere Simulator is a big mistake. The reasons behind this are pretty creepy. The controversial rise of Yandere Dev. 
In this twisted love story of Yandere Simulator, the stakes are high as players navigate the line between love and insane obsession. This game shows us just how easily things can spiral when we lose control. As a content creator, it's the same way. Anything can happen. In one instance, I'm going about my day creating these videos for you guys, and the next, I'm hacked and my personal information is leaked online for everyone to see. Which, by the way, has happened to me. And this video sponsor, Optory, helps you with just that. Optory is a data removal service that's designed to protect your personal online information. So ever since I got hacked, I thought that I did a pretty good job staying private online. But when I started my free exposure risk scan with Optory, I found my phone number, email, and home address on 34 different data broker sites that I've never even heard of before. Data brokers buy and sell information about you from your social media activity, driver's license, and even in-person places you visit. Optory removes your private info from hundreds of data broker sites. This makes it harder for criminals, spammers, and big tech to access and abuse your personal data. So it's completely free to do your own scan and it's easy to sign up by using my link. If Optory finds any of your data online, you can choose to upgrade to Optory's paid plans starting at $3.99 a month to get your data removed. Click my link in the description below and use my promo code VISUAL for 20% off any plan. Take it from me, keeping your data safe is priceless. So who's the creator of such a twisted and violent game? Alex, better known as Yandere Dev, is the game's developer and pretty much the face of the game, or the voice to be specific. On his YouTube channel, Yandere Dev, he would post consistent videos about the game's newest features and updates, as well as more entertaining content like character lore videos or even Christmas songs. Alex's constant uploads were a big driver for the game's success since it kept the fan base hooked on Yandere Simulator. The channel was meant to show the development development of the game, but it didn't take long for Alex's personality to slip through the cracks. And soon, fans started to dislike Yandere Dev as a person. When Yandere Simulator first became popular in early 2015, Alex jumped on the opportunity to open up a Patreon, which is a website that lets fans support a creator or their projects through donations. As an indie game developer, this sort of crowdfunding is pretty common. So when he first opened the account, no one thought anything of it. But as the development went on, fans started to suspect that Alex was possibly using the money for something other than the game because the updates that were coming out just didn't seem to be good anymore. Alex was found spending money from his Patreon funds to buy a second Nintendo Switch so he could make a new Animal Crossing world. Not to mention, he was no longer the only person working on the game. He built a team of volunteers to help him, but none of that Patreon money was going to them either. So where was it all going, especially since the game still hasn't made any real progress? Now, one of the biggest warning signs of Yandere Dev's questionable behavior was how he treated his volunteers. As the only developer, Alex didn't have a reliable team to help him finish the game, so he decided to look for some help. Aspiring developers and fans of the game were able to sign up to be a volunteer to work under Yandere Dev and directly on the Yandere Simulator game. As the name of the role suggests, this was an unpaid position on Yandere Dev's team. Tasks ranged from social media management to illustrations to actual game development. But even though he was getting a ton of free labor. It seemed like Yandere Dev complained about his volunteers more than appreciating them. To make matters worse, he would allegedly also take the credit for what they were doing. So they weren't getting paid and they also weren't getting credit. And this still wasn't good enough for him. This put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. Because in 2018, one of Yandere Dev's volunteers would come forward and expose everything that happened behind the scenes, painting Alex in an even worse light. Micah Sozo, or at Sozo Micah on Twitter, went on Facebook and posted a complaint about Yandere Dev stealing her artwork to use in one of his videos. In the comments of that post, she gave more context. She said that Yandere Dev had a policy that he wouldn't use any work created by volunteers after they leave the team. He had also said that their work was just a placeholder in the game and would be taken out as the development continued. However, this wasn't the case. Two years later in 2020, Micah tweeted about this again. She went into detail about how Yandere Dev would make his unpaid volunteers do an unbelievable amount of work, more than what should have been given to someone not making any money. She also said that at the time she was a teenager balancing multiple part-time jobs and getting no recognition or even gratefulness for the work that she was doing for him. Micah also said that she was asked to do a bunch of different things like modifying the in-game models, designing posters, and making illustrations. She did all this under the impression that she would 
would be getting credit for her work, especially since she wasn't getting paid. But she didn't. And when she requested it, the response that Yandere Dev gave her was brutal. Instead of hearing out her concerns, Yandere Dev retaliated and said that she was overreacting. And he ended the paragraph with this. Why did you have to waste such a tremendous amount of my time? Why, why, why? He also said that she was burning bridges by demanding credit for her work and gave her a five-step plan on how to properly work together with others in a project. And this is just one of the many volunteer horror stories. On Reddit and Discord, there are dozens of instances from former Yandere Dev volunteers talking about their negative experiences working on the game. The artist then sent his work the same night to Alex and was met with an unprofessional and incredibly rude response, with Alex telling him that his art looks awful and something he'd never want to have put anywhere near his game. If you go on the Yandere Dev volunteer page, one of the rules is that you must be 18 to sign up, as well as have relevant skills and work experience. But it was said that those requirements were not real, and that anyone of any age could become a volunteer. These young volunteers, like Micah, were still naive. They just wanted to work on the game that they they loved, not realizing that they were practically being used for free labor. But even with all this, there were still plenty of people who continued to sign up because Yandere Simulator will always have dedicated fans willing to go the extra mile to see the game completed. So why is the game still taking forever to be released? Yandere Dev has always been criticized for pushing back the game's official release, and with Alex having a team of volunteers now backing him, it seemed like there was no excuse. Because even though Yandere Dev was consistently uploading loading on his channel, the quality of the updates were getting worse. Most of the time, it seemed like the updates were tiny. Either they were easter eggs or visual changes, both of which didn't really progress the game's storyline. And in reality, most of the assets in the game couldn't actually be used in an official release because most of the game's characters, props, and environments were bought from online marketplaces, or allegedly completely stolen. Yandere Dev has promised that the models and assets that are currently in the game will be replaced down the line with more polished models from the ground up. The very model for the main character of the game is taken straight out of the Unity asset store and quite a lot of the assets around the school were taken from various places from the internet. These assets are not allowed to be monetized without permission and definitely not allowed to be part of any official game release. So this could be the reason why the game has been delayed for so long. Because getting all these assets changed can be expensive and if the claims of the Patreon money going elsewhere is true, then maybe that's why the development has been so slow. And on top of all that, people also started to notice that some of these minor updates were actually creepy. You see, Yandere Dev has had a pretty rocky history on the internet. With Yandere Simulator having become such a popular game, it's no surprise that a couple of curious fans did a little digging into the developer's past, and some of the stuff they found was unsettling. In 2008, Alex made posts on the Gaia online forum using the user name not depressed anymore. In these posts, Alex would vent about how girls have told him that he looks creepy. He also mentioned that no girl has ever shown interest in him and that he was a nice and friendly guy. If you're looking at the post alone, he just seems like a self-conscious guy who's a bit nervous about his own looks. But once you actually take a deeper dive into the posts under that username, you'll realize that it's more than that. A common theme that you'd find in his forum posts were his troubles with women or his infatuation with them. He would often describe them in inappropriate ways describing their body in detail, or complain about how girls didn't want to be romantic with him and say that he's depressed because other men were able to be intimate with the girls that he liked. And it seems like his Yandere fantasies had started way before Yandere Simulator was even a thing, because one particular forum post was pretty revealing about his taste in women. Notably, he also posts about his desire to be in a codependent relationship where his girlfriend is obsessed with him and heavily relies on him. Hmm, funny someone could make a game about that concept. In that specific post, he said that he wanted to be a vital central part of a girl's life, which explains how he would eventually go on to create Yandere Simulator, a game with a main character whose sole purpose in life is to be completely obsessed with her male love interest. He was also known to engage in vile and disgusting behavior as shown through his other forum posts and Twitter accounts. His hobbies include playing disturbing games and reading sick fanfiction, all of which makes playing Yandere Simulator look like a family-friendly activity. This is already a red flag, but people can change, right? It might seem unreasonable to judge someone solely based on old internet posts, but until now, his problematic behavior hasn't gone away. In fact, it's seeped into Yandere Simulator, a game that's not only dark, but also has some questionable features that seem to fuel Yandere Dev's fantasies. 
Yandere Simulator's problematic themes. In a game like this, there are obviously some dark themes, but violence aside, there's other things happening in the game that's left fans a little uneasy. Back in 2016, Yandere Dev addressed a highly controversial possible update to his game that fans were not happy about. Alex had posted a poll asking fans whether or not he should implement a new inventory system to the game. But instead of regular backpacks or pockets like most games had, this inventory would be in the main character Aino's skirt. And when players use the inventory, that would expose her undergarments. Unsurprisingly, most of the fan base was against this idea. 78% of the poll results wanted the undergarments to either be censored or not have a system like this at all. This skirt concept was the last straw for a lot of Yandere Simulator fans who felt like they couldn't defend Alex's behavior any longer. Especially because all things considered, it seemed like Yandere Simulator took place in a high school, which would mean that Ayano, the main character, was young. In response to the backlash, Yandere Dev went on to say that the skirt concept was to make sure the game was not bland. He felt like any other inventory system would be too safe for his so-called weird game. And the sort of risky inventory system was exactly what was needed to keep the game from getting boring. In a game all about frantically stalking your crush and eliminating your rivals in brutal ways, it seems pretty far from boring. And fans were baffled by his choice to add this feature when so many other intriguing options were available. But this wasn't the only situation that left fans uneasy about the game. In Yandere Simulator, undergarments have become a recurring gameplay element. In the game, players can gain certain bonuses if they put on certain undergarments. Players are able to purchase new ones for Ayano to wear and switch them out depending on her needs, since each pair comes with a special buff. And if that's not weird enough, players can also take inappropriate photos of other characters and send them to Infochan, who is a student that will grant you a favor in exchange for your photo. This feature would be concerning in any game, but given Yandere Simulator's context and characters, it's even more disturbing. And speaking of characters, we can't forget these disturbing rivals that have been included in the game. One of the most problematic aspects in the game is the rivals, which are all the other characters that the player has to eliminate to get to Senpai. One of these rivals is called Maida Rana, and she is a substitute teacher with a really creepy hobby, tempting schoolboys. In her character description, Maida is said to enjoy having dozens of eyes all directed towards her. The character is described as constantly hunting out her prey with whoever she desires having no hope of escape. And considering that she's a school teacher, that makes her obsession with boys highly problematic. That's not the only character that's like this. There's also another rival character by the name of Muja Kina, who is another adult working at the school as a nurse. She fell in love with Senpai after he came into the medical ward while vulnerable and sick. And once again, she is a bit too old. And arguably the worst rival of all is Hana Hanako Yamada, Senpai's younger sister. She loves her big brother more than anything in the world and is very possessive of him. She's also so obsessed with her brother to the point where she's transferred schools just so she could be with him all day long. Hanako is deathly afraid of her brother getting a girlfriend, making it her own personal mission to stop him from getting one at all costs. These three characters clearly highlight the creepy behavior being promoted in the game. That, combined with the obsessive shows of love, violence, and deception makes this game a gray area for a lot of people, especially since a majority of the player base seemed to be on the younger side. And it wasn't just viewers that were concerned with the nature of the game. In 2016, the streaming giant Twitch banned Yandere Simulator from being broadcasted on their platform. Although Twitch never gave a formal reason as to why the game was banned, they did send Yandere Dev an email. In the email, they claimed that they could not reveal the reason behind the game game's ban without also exposing why certain users were banned off the platform as well, which would go against the privacy policy. But it might be safe to assume that the game's dark themes and its glorification of the Yandere archetype are the main reasons why. Because not only are Yandere Simulator fans obsessed with Aino's quest for love, but they're also obsessed with the game, and they're not afraid to show it. The Toxic Community 
Throughout the years, Yandere Simulator has built up a devoted community of fans that have stuck with the game through thick and thin. In late 2014 to early 2015, Yandere Simulator blew up on YouTube after popular content creators like Markiplier, PewDiePie, and Jacksepticeye started playing the game. They would post gameplay videos onto their channels that got millions of views, bringing Yandere Simulator to a much wider audience. But the bigger the community grew, the weirder it got. For starters, there were diehard fans that loudly proclaimed their love for the game. As Yandere Simulator became mainstream in gaming, more and more YouTubers started posting content of the game. It didn't take long for their channels to grow, and at first it seemed like these YouTubers had struck a content gold mine. But then things took a turn. One of these content creators was Biju Mike, also known as Michael. Michael posted a ton of videos about the game and was a go-to for many Yandere Simulator fans. But it soon felt like a lot of his viewers were only there for that particular game and nothing else. And I'm not gonna lie, but sometimes I feel like I'm at the mercy of Yandere Simulator. Like, if I stopped playing Yandere Simulator right now, would my channel just die? Yandere Simulator players are hardcore to say the least. They even inflicted damage upon on their own community. We've already established the dark nature of the game. You stalk, you manipulate, you eliminate. These actions in Yandere Simulator are frowned upon in the real world, but not everyone believes that. To some of these fans, the Yandere Ayano is not a love-crazed, dangerous person. She's someone that they aspire to be, or someone they look for in a romantic partner. There are so many young, impressionable Yandere Simulator fans that have taken what they've seen from the game and used it as their standard for love. And as we'll see in our next chapter, their obsession with Yandere's will have real world consequences. The disturbing story of Yuka Takaoka. The romanticization of the Yandere lifestyle is not only concerning, but dangerous. There have always been Yandere's in anime, movies, and games, but they also exist outside of a screen. In Japan, where the term Yandere originated, there have been several cases of people taking their love too far and committing crimes that they can never take back. The most famous case is Yuka Takaoka, a real-life Yandere who ruined her and her boyfriend's life out of love. In Yandere Simulator, when Ayano gets found out by her crush, she snaps. And when she does, she doesn't only eliminate her enemies, she also eliminates her senpai. Yuka Takaoka did the same thing, but in real life. And scarily enough, people in Japan adore her and obsess over her because she's beautiful, rather than seeing the heinous crime for what it truly is. In fact, they've romanticized her so much that she has her own fan base. The Yandere has an entire community as obsessed with her as she was with her boyfriend. And that's just the reality of what happens when you glorify dangerous archetypes like the Yandere. The internet was vowed by Yuka Takaoka's good looks and dubbed her as a Yandere. Users on social became obsessed with Yuka and her crime and began to create paintings and drawings of her. Several reporters have written articles describing the strange fascination that people have with attractive criminals that is almost akin to worship. And when it comes to Yandere Simulator, it gamifies that sort of behavior. In January of 2019, a 10-year-old girl who was a huge fan of Yandere Simulator tried to roleplay as Ayano by bringing something she shouldn't have to her school in Southampton, Hampshire. Although there's a warning message at the start of the game that tells people not to copy what they see, there's always someone that doesn't listen. Game developer Yandere Dev said that it was alarming to hear about the incident in Southampton and added that there was a warning message in the game asking people not to copy it. Yandere Simulator's reputation is declining fast, but the worst part out of all of this is that there are allegations against Yandere Dev that could result in serious trouble. Yandere Dev is in hot water. Recently, the Yandere Simulator community has fallen to its last limb after several allegations have come up about Yandere Dev's inappropriate behavior with members of the fanbase. Voice recordings were taken by a girl in the community exposing Yandere Dev for wanting a cupcake of his own. If you know, you know. There's also several Snapchat conversation screenshots and Discord conversations to back up these allegations. His first initial response was that the girl was one of the guys and that his inappropriate comments were just jokes. 
But after seeing how much intense backlash he was getting, he made another response. Yandere Dev wrote a blog post calling the situation an act of horribly self-destructive behavior and calling it a result of poor mental health and consistently making incredibly unwise lifestyle choices. Since these allegations have surfaced, his Patreon donations have dropped drastically. Many content creators, staff members, and fans of the community have jumped ship entirely, leaving the game without a community. While it's unclear if Yandere Dev will continue working on Yandere Simulator, one thing's for sure. The fan base is dying, and Yandere Simulator might just remain a game of the past. My friends, make sure you're able to properly separate fantasy from reality. If you find that your entire life revolves around video games, you gotta go outside and touch grass because there's so much more to life than what's on your computer screen. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm will promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos. Please have an absolutely wonderful week. Peace.